So I'm going to put a little oil on my workpiece. Just a little bit there will be fine. I'm going to get about a half an inch away from the part. All of my feeding is now done with the compound rest. All of the feeding. So I'm going to go a few thousands. I'm going to go about three thousandths for this first pass. The further we go, the more tool engagement occurs and we will be backing off of our thread depth. Okay, I'm going to go. I happen to be picked up on line number five. And see how you see very little cutting happening. We're just getting started. Again, the, co the cross slide comes out. Move the carriage back. The cross slide comes in. I move it back one revolution, which in this case is two hundred thousandths of an inch. Now I'm going to move another three thousandths in on my compound rest. I'm lining up for the number five again. Here we go. So I can engage on any number for this particular thread. Some people are cautious and want to go to the exact same number each time. Nothing wrong with that. Other folks are a little more adventurous and they will engage on any one number, one through eight. We're still not cutting too much just yet. We don't have a lot of tool engagement. Each time, again, I'm moving the cross slide back and then back in, taking my backlash out. And thus far, I happen to stay on the same number. That timing works out pretty well right now. Gauge this time on the three. Starting to take a little bigger cut. Knowing that I'm going to uh, move my compound rest as far as about 44 thousandths. I know where I'm headed, so I'm not worried about that. Right now, I am at uh, 16 thousandths on the compound rest. Still going about 3 thousandths each time. Notice our heavier cut. important that we get when we get part way along in these threads to continue to pay attention because if we miss disengaging we certainly can make a mess I can see that by the look of the thread, it's still fairly flat on the top, also known as the crest. I'm going about two and a half thousandths each time with my compound rest. As a reminder, we set our compound rest at 29 to 29 and a half degrees. So for the most part, our tool actually cuts on the left-hand side. There is some cutting action on the right, 
the largest portion of the cutting is happening on the left side. We don't want both sides of the tool to cut at the same time in any big way so that we reduce the possibilities of chatter in our thread. Add a little more oil here. Really, I want to brush away these chips so I can see. I'm now approaching 34 thousandths on the compound rest. Got about 10 to go, and shortly we'll take a measurement to verify where we really are on this thread. Now down to about two thousandths per pass. Let's take one more pass. We're at 37 thousandths. Then we're going to take a look at it and see if we can get a measurement. And before I stop, I'm going to take one more pass, but I'm not going to change my setting on the compound rest. This is known as a spring pass. This time engaging on number two. And we really don't see much happening there on that spring pass. Before I stop, I will set my cross slide just where it should be. When we stop with a thread, we can stop the rotation, we can stop the movement. We must not take the part out of the machine until we know for sure that we're done with this thread. Now I have my Mitutoyo 0 to 1 inch thread micrometer here. Notice the 24 to 14, that's in the range of our 16 thread per inch thread that we're working on. I'm going to pull this little anvil out here and that slides into the micrometer. But when we do that, we must verify that it zeroes out. I'm not sure what set was in before, but let's take a look and be sure that this zeroes out. This anvil is indeed adjustable. Well, we're pretty close there. That does zero out. Notice that we can adjust it here. There's a thread, uh, this knurled nut. We have to undo the lock, adjust the knurled nut back and forth, lock it when we're done. But this one does come right up to zero, so we're ready to measure our thread. We're going to go back to the lathe and see where we are right now. So I've cleaned off my thread. Notice the crest is very flat still, and we know we have a little more on the compound rest to go. And our micrometer here does indeed confirm that. We're at about 727,000, eight or nine tenths, pretty close to 728 thousandths. And the high, as you may remember, uh, is 7079, pretty close to 708 thousandths on our pitch diameter. That confirms that we do have a little further to go. I'm on 30 seven on my compound rest. These don't always work out just right. It depends on how hard you touch your workpiece, uh, how deep you go. Um, so our 44 thousandths that we calculated is really a target by measuring is the only way that we'll really know if our part will pass inspection. So we're gonna take some more cuts. I'm just verifying that I'm in the right place and things look good. I'm going to line up for number four this time and we'll get started. So even though I have about 20 thousandths to go it seems, remember that we're cutting on all sides of this thread. And so those numbers don't exactly correlate into just a simple number as if you were adjusting a diameter. 
We are cutting on many sides. I'm down to about a thousandths and a half each pass now because we have so much tool in contact. And again, stopping about the midpoint on our thread relief. I'm about 43 thousandths now. Probably a good time to take another measurement. I'm gonna make one more pass. It'll be a spring pass. We're actually on the number three this time. It's a pretty heavy spring pass, excuse me. Let's take that one more time. We're gonna go back, get our micrometer, and see what our thread looks like. Just gonna wipe that off. Notice that crest is much less flat there. Our anvil goes in much easier now. All right, our micrometer in the midpoint is about 713 towards the end. We're about 713, 712 and a half, perhaps. I like to take a few measurements across the length of the thread. We're a little bigger naturally in the back, close to 713 and a couple of tenths. So we're making good progress. We do not want to overshoot our thread. We're somewhere around 12 to 13. I think a few more thousands will bring us in. We're shooting for the high, just in case we overshoot that. And again, that high is about 708 thousands. I'm gonna go about another thousands on my compound rest. That's a pretty small cut right now. Another thousandths or so. Unfortunately, somewhere along the line, we gathered a little extra there. Probably the cross slide setting was a little off. I'm using the dial right now, so we're close. And I'll take this last cut here and see where we end up. In threading, since it takes such a long time to really get where we need to be, I would advise measuring more often than not. I think you usually end up better if you measure it a few extra times to be sure, because once you go past, you're in trouble. There's no turning back. All right, our high is 707.9. I'm 707 in a couple of tenths, which we don't really have a tenth scale on this micrometer. So I'm really guessing there. I have to be careful to find the largest point on the diameter, so I'm moving this micrometer a few uh, thousands as I go across to make sure that I've got the largest part of the diameter. I could be ever so slightly on the high side, 708, 707. We're right there. Our compound rest <coughs> happens to read 45 thousandths. I'm going to take about a half thousandths cut here. I'm also 
verifying my position with my cross slide just to be sure I didn't bump it. And this should be our last cut. It isn't taking much, so we may take one more. You're always concerned that you don't bump anything or cause the machine to want to cut a little bit more. There is a little stress there. And of course, the part moves away. Yeah, that's going to be good, I think. We're going to stop here. In any case, because I'm still not sure that my part is exactly right, I have not taken it out of the machine yet. It is possible to pick up a thread. That's not as easy as it sounds, so we try not to um, take a thread, uh, take a threaded shaft out until we're really sure we're there. Having a little trouble getting that in. There we go. Yeah, it seems like we're just a, still a tiny bit on the high side in a couple of spots. I'm going to grab our go no go gauge. So we didn't look at these earlier, but this is our go gauge. We can see that because we have some green here. This go gauge should go right on our thread uh, without any issue. Screws right on. That's good should go all the way off the end and come back. So that feels good. That's an indication that we're probably all right. And our no-go gauge, as indicated by the red, and of course they are laser marked with all the specifications. If it goes part of a turn, that's fine. Uh, it should thread on a little bit, but that's about it. So we might be ever on the high side just a little, but our go gauge does in fact go and it feels pretty good, so I'm going to say we're all right. There are some other ways to measure our threads, such as wires and things like that, and we'll look at that in a separate video. Thanks.